Fondant potatoes. The f is that? You mean to tell me them things ain't scallops? Today on Poor Choices, we are making fondant potatoes for your smaller, intimate brunches. Fancy ass cylindrical potatoes seared in fat and then roasted in broth. We're also gonna horrify our French culinary friends by adding a bacon and shallot gravy on top of it because you ain't gonna catch me out in these streets with regular ass blood pressure. And uh, what was that, three seconds in and I was cussing? Yep, this video is not getting seen. Starting out, we're gonna take four rusted potatoes and cut off the ends. Ideally, you want them to be straight down cuts because we really wanna shape these potatoes into the presentation that's gonna be there at the end. Then we'll cut what we have left in half and here's where you can work on your knife skills. We'll cut the peel off straight down as much as possible all around it, working to get this into a barrel shape. You could use a biscuit cutter here if you have one, but again, why not get some practice in on the knife, right? You can also bevel the edges of the potato to make them all around smooth the presentation, but it's not required. Once you've got your potatoes shaped up, immediately put them into some cold water and move on to the next. This will wash off the starch and also keep the potatoes from turning brown. And it won't hurt to let them soak in that water for 20 minutes when you're done with all of them. Now, some people will use new potatoes for this or whatever potato they have in the region, but I figured russets are everywhere. Uh, and of course, watch someone in the UK tell me that they're not. Sorry, y'all. Ultimately, you just want a waxy potato. This is also a good time to preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Once we're done with all of our potatoes, let's get some cast iron over ripping hot heat. As it heats up, we can take our potatoes out of the water and get them as dry as possible because hot oil and water will make for a very bad experience. Trust me, once our cast iron is hot, we'll place a high smoke point oil in like this avocado oil, or you can use grapeseed oil, along with a little bit of duck fat for flavor. The duck fat is totally optional, but potatoes with duck fat are like best friends. Otherwise, just get your pan covered in oil, then gently place your potatoes in, vertically of course, and let those bad boys sear for a few minutes. We want the ends to be brown and crispy. Salt and pepper the top side while the bottom sears. And also, I didn't have this on hand at the time, but some cooking spray or duck fat spray on top of these will help that seasoning stick a lot better. We'll check after a few minutes, and if it's brown, it's time to flip over. If the others aren't there yet, don't sweat it. Just keep them down for another minute or so. Salt and pepper your cook side, and then it's time to fatten this thing up. I'm throwing in about four tablespoons of butter, and I want this to melt and start foaming. And I've got about four cloves of garlic here that I just crushed in the paper. I'm also throwing in two sprigs of thyme and two sprigs of rosemary. And make sure you get that in that melting butter. Again, we're looking for that foam action before we add our next ingredient, which is just some good quality chicken broth. I stress the importance of this. If you can make it yourself, go for it, of course. But otherwise, try to grab a very good quality one because it's going to contribute a lot to the taste of this dish. If you go cheap, it's going to taste cheap. I'm adding enough broth to come up just slightly at the halfway point of the potatoes. Once the broth comes up to a boil, transfer the entire cast iron pan into the oven and it's gonna sit in there for 30 minutes and we'll check the potatoes with a toothpick for tenderness. While this cooks, we can start on our bacon and shallot gravy. In another pan, we'll saute up three strips of bacon over medium high heat till they're done. You can skip this and just use straight up bacon fat that you may have been keeping around stored because that's all we really need, but I want the bacon for adding on top later as a garnish. And also because who doesn't love bacon? This is actually growth for me because normally when a recipe calls for bacon and a few strips at a time, I just use the entire pack. I want about two tablespoons worth of bacon fat left in the pan when we're done. Then we'll add in a finely diced whole shallot. These were pretty big on this day, so you may need two to three if they're on the smaller side. I'd say it was about half a cup's worth of shallots. Hit them with a little salt once they're in the pan and let them saute for a few minutes until starting to brown on the edges. Then we'll add two tablespoons of flour into the pan and whisk that around until the raw flour smell is gone. Trust me, you'll know the difference between when you first put it in there and after you've given it about a minute or so of whisking. I also threw in a sprig of rosemary and thyme in here. Totally optional, but gives the gravy a great flavor boost. Then in goes a 50-50 blend of vegetable stock and chicken stock. You could go all the way with either one, but I had a little bit of both left and wanted to use them up. Try not to waste stuff here anymore. This was two cups worth. Pour that in, whisk it around, and I think at this point I kind of lowered it to a medium heat and let it simmer and thicken. Checking on our potatoes to see if a toothpick goes through them smoothly, and I believe these needed like five more minutes, which was perfect because it allowed the potatoes to come out and cool for a bit when they were done while I still finished up the gravy. It's all about trying to time these things to be done at the exact same time. So it's good to start on that gravy almost immediately after you put the potatoes in the oven. Also, if you find your potatoes aren't done yet and the broth has cooked almost completely out, don't be afraid to add some more. As for the gravy, it can be cooked to your preference of consistency, but this right here, where I dragged the spatula through and it didn't immediately close back up, was just right for me. I cut the heat off and added in one fourth cup of heavy cream and gave it all a mix. And that is our gravy. Taste it and see if you need salt and pepper. For me, it definitely needed some salt because the potatoes don't have a lot of it. Even though they have a lot of great flavors going on, salt is definitely going to set this dish off right. So I'm bringing that in the gravy. 
Just don't get too heavy. Do a little here, stir, taste, then maybe a little bit more until it's to your liking. If you go into this dish without adding salt anywhere, you're gonna be highly disappointed because the potatoes are just gonna be blah. Imagine McDonald's fries without salt. It's gonna be like that. And of course the bacon's gonna bring its own saltiness to the party when we top the potatoes and gravy with it. It's all about balance, but that's it. Plate your potatoes and drizzle as much gravy on it as you'd like. I smothered mine right after I finished filming. I just did it lightly to get these shots. I know it seems like a lot for a little bit, but again, this is for smaller intimate brunches. You could just easily make regular roasted potatoes and then just have this gravy on the side, which will absolutely be delicious. But this is a nice presentation food. Also, those pan juices from what the potatoes cooked in make a great sauce as well, so don't discard that. You could easily just use that instead of making a gravy, but I want it to be fat and mission accomplished. Hey everybody, we have a Patreon, it's in the link below. One dollar a month is all we ask for. It goes a long way in helping us pay for these recipes and meals and whatnot. And I appreciate everyone who's been donating and I apologize again for the absence, but you know, I had to take a little vacation, I had to get some time off, get myself back together. Um, so we are continuing to move into a few more brunch things and then guess what? It's grilling season, which I cannot wait. So until next time, I'll see y'all. Oh, and of course, Poor choices we're talking brunch. Listen, mimosas, Sauvignon Blanc, whatever your wine, sangria, you know what to go to. Peace out.